The Lord said to Simon Peter, I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail, and once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. In the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Through Sandy Hill, the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that no tempest may disturb us, for you have set us fast on the rock of the Apostle Peter's confession of faith, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Now as an elder myself and a witness of the suffering of Christ, as well as one who shares in the glory to be revealed, I exhort the elders among you to extend the flock of God that is in your charge, exercising the overseeing, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you do it, not for sordid gain, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those in your charge, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will win the crown of glory that never fades away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm, let a response be, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord, the Lord is, is my shepherd, shepherd there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down the green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And the disciples said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Jesus said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. G.K. Chesterton once described the church uh, and the doctrine of the church as um, a playground on the top of a, of, of a mountaintop with, with sheer precipices around it. That because of the fence of doctrine around the outside uh, of the church or the outside of the playground, the children could play safely and enjoy themselves. But if you remove that wall, the children will be frightened to fall off the precipice. And that's what our church teaching gives us. It gives us that sure, uh, it gives us that sure guide that we know where the boundaries are. We know where we can, um, we can uh, go when we um, study things, and we know the truth of what things are. We know, we know what we believe. We know what's right and wrong. And that's kind of a beautiful thing. Today, a lot of people are complaining about a lack of clarity, uh, perhaps. But I, I think it's important to remember that there is a clarity, a very powerful clarity, and that clarity is the 2,000-year-old tradition and sacred scripture of the church. It always remains. We've never had something that has deviated from that whole thing. And so when people are like, well, what, what should we believe? It seems like Pope Francis is, is not giving a lot of clarity when he gives statements. But as Catholics, we have clarity. We have the catechism. You, you, we can't go against that. Right? These are the doctrinal teachings of the church. We have sacred scripture. We have the ancient tradition of the church, and that is always going to remain. That's why Jesus gives this beautiful thing, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Today is the feast of the chair of Peter, which means the teaching authority of St. Peter. And we have the grace to trust that. And of, you know, the, the many popes we've had, 266, I believe, is our number that we're at right now, um, God has preserved the Catholic ch Church through all those things. And some were not saints, some were saints, some were martyrs, some were evil men. But God preserved the Church through all that. And, and that's why as Catholics we, we are blessed. You know, you don't have to guess what's right and wrong as a Catholic. God has defined it for us. As Scott Hahn says, you know, it's like a pool. You know where the deep end is, it's marked, and you know where the shallow end is, is marked, and so you know where you can dive in. And, and that's what the church, that's what the church grants you and I, this freedom, you know, to know the truth and to um, kind of play within the truth and, and be and, and enjoy, enjoy that, uh, that you know that you're heading in a right direction by following the teachings of the church. That, that we know that this is a, a progress, a, a ladder that we can climb on because we know that the bars on it are solid. <clears throat> and so, as Catholics, we should praise God for this day. This, this, is, a, this is a beautiful uh, day of celebration where we're reminded of the fixes that are in our lives, the fixed points of reference that we can always trust in.
should pour forth prayer at all times, dear brothers and sisters, but above all in these days of Lent, we ought to watch more intently with Christ and direct our petitions more fervently to God. We pray for our Holy Father Francis, for Pope Emeritus Benedict, for our Bishop Joseph, for their health and tensions and constant growth in faith, hope, and charity. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are creating division in the church, who are muddling the waters on doctrine and on church teaching, that they may hold fast to the sacred scriptures, the, the long-standing dogmas of the church, the, the church teachings, and, and embrace them and realize that their uh, departure, departure from the truth stems from their own woundedness. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are taking away our religious liberties, those who have no respect for them. We pray for the conversion of their hearts. We pray for all those people that have the courage to stand up against them. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who um, have the power to influence, especially through media, through uh, politics, through teaching, through religion, that they may respect God's divine law, his, his natural law, and protect the rights of individuals. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for the sick and the dying, those who will die today, those in most need of God's mercy. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those in public office that are Catholic and oppose the church teachings, do not uh, follow with what God has said, that they may have the grace to submit to the authority of Peter. For this we pray to the Lord. And at this Mass we pray in a special way for the priestly fraternity of St. Peter. For this we pray to the Lord. In a moment of silence we offer up our own prayers and petitions. pray to the Lord. We pray for all the holy souls in purgatory and we ask them to join us with the saints in heaven, especially St. Joseph, our blessed mother, St. Margaret of Cortona, to pray for more vocations to the priesthood, to the consecrated life and to holy matrimony, to preserve all those in their vocations and assist us in our universal call to holiness. For this we pray to the Lord. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your people may turn to you with all their hearts, so that whatever they dare to ask in fitting prayer, they may receive by your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept with favor, O Lord, we pray, the prayers and offerings of your church, that with St. Peter as her shepherd, she may come to the eternal inheritance, for it is through her teaching that she holds the faith in its integrity. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed Apostle, watch over it and protect it always so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
Peter said to Jesus, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Peter and Jesus replied, You are Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church. Let us pray. O God, who at our celebration on the feast day of blessed Apostle Peter have nourished us by communion in the body and the blood of Christ, grant, we pray, that this redeeming exchange may be for us a sacrament of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.